Are you winning, failing, or flailing as a CEO? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly assess the performance of any CEO, whether that CEO is you or someone leading your company. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ryan Dice. My partners and I have started or acquired 17 different companies. So I both evaluated CEOs and been evaluated as a CEO. I know what it looks like to win. I know what it looks like to fail. And I know what it looks like when you're flailing and hoping that no one else is noticing. So let's get into it. The first place I look when evaluating a CEO's performance is an obvious one, but it's so obvious that people tend to miss it. And that place is their team's output. Andy Grove in his book, High Output Management famously said, the manager's job is to increase the output of the team. In other words, the team's output is the manager's output. And I believe that this goes double for the CEO. So this is really simple. If the team isn't productive, then the CEO isn't productive. It really is as simple as that. Now we use the word productivity a lot, but let's unpack it, shall we? Productivity, what does it really mean? It means what is the product of your team's activity. So if there's nothing to show for it, if there is no product of the team's activity, then they're merely busy. That is the difference between being productive and being busy. Do you have anything to show for it? Is there any product? So are they getting stuff done? Are they achieving their goals? If not, it doesn't matter how hard they're working. It doesn't matter how smart they may appear. They simply are not effective as a CEO. So look at the team. Are they hitting their goals? Are they hitting their targets? If yes, so far, the CEO is looking good. If not, kind of at this point, not particularly effective as a CEO. The second place I look when evaluating a CEO's performance is their calendar. And what I'm gonna look for here is, are they focused on truly high leveraged tasks? And I don't need to know exactly what all they're doing, but I'm gonna look for things like, have they blocked off one-on-one -on -one times to meet with their key leaders? That's a really high leverage task for a CEO. If they're not making time for their key leaders, that's a problem. Also, I wanna see white space. Believe it or not, that's important. When you're thinking about the CEO role, I don't wanna see every single minute of every single day blocked off for a lot of different meetings. I wanna make sure that they have some white space. They have white space to think, to plan, and most importantly, to absorb the unexpected. That's right, as a CEO, there should be gaps in the calendar that are unfilled. If you're operating at 100% capacity, then you're not really allowing yourself margin to respond to the unexpected emergencies or heck, unexpected opportunities. There also just needs to be gaps because there should be an ever widening inverse correlation between your individual contribution and the overall performance of your team. If the team's performance and your individual performance as a CEO are directly correlated, in other words, what you put in is what you kind of get out of your team and they always stay directly aligned, then you're just a high performance individual, but you're not a very good CEO. So we wanna to start to see that you're working less and less and less and your team is actually performing at a higher rate. That's why I wanna see CEOs technically working less, but the teams performing at a higher rate. The third place I like to look when evaluating a CEO's performance is the future, specifically their vision for the future. And I wanna look at the future, but without ignoring the present. So I'm gonna ask them questions like, hey, Mr. and Mrs. CEO, what do you believe is the right next thing that your team should be focusing on right now? And what is the right next thing that they should be focusing on next. And this is really, really, really important because great CEOs aren't just great at anticipating what's to come. They're also great at knowing what their team should be focused on right now and clearing the barriers and the landmines so that they can maintain momentum while also staying out of their way when they have momentum. And that second part is really, really important, by the way. What I see with a lot of young CEOs and people who are kind of in the CEO role for the first time, and this is especially true for founder CEOs is we're really, really good at getting in our time machines and going out into the future and envisioning and imagining and visionating on what the future is going to be. And we come back and we tell our teams, this is what I see in the future. And we're very good at predicting the future. And we're very good at casting a vision for what the future is. And what we're oftentimes not as good at is telling our team, and yet in light of this future, this is what is most important right now. So you need to be able to do both. 
If you cannot predict the future, and if you cannot connect that future to today, you're simply not gonna be an effective CEO. You gotta be able to do both. At the end of the day, if a CEO's team is achieving its goals, if their calendar leaves room to respond to the unexpected, whether it's an unexpected bad or an unexpected good, and if they anticipate the future while maintaining a steady focus on their company's right next thing for today, you can be sure that you have a CEO that is performing at the highest levels. But what do you do if that is not the case? What do you do if you have the CEO title, but you determine that you aren't functioning like a great CEO? Or what do you do if the person on your team who has the CEO title is not functioning like a great CEO? Well, before I tell you what to do, let me tell you a couple things not to do, okay? First and foremost, don't try to become more productive. And this is really, really important, and yet this is where most of us go. And this is really, this is critical because we believe something that's very important and is a little bit counterintuitive at The Scalable Company. We believe the more valuable you are to your business, the less valuable your business is. I'm gonna say it again because it's so important. As the founder, as the CEO, the more valuable you are to your business, the less valuable your business is. So. As the CEO, your goal should actually be to do less, not more. Again, we're looking at the calendar and we want to see that inverse correlation. The CEO is doing less and less and less, and yet the team is accomplishing more and more and more. So if you're struggling, the answer is not another planner. The answer is not another time management solution because the answer is not to do more. The answer more than likely is to do less. And I'll tell you how we're gonna do that in just a second. But for right now, don't try to become more productive. That is not the solution. Second, don't try to simply hire more people. Again, this is a mistake that I see early in first time CEOs make all the time. They say, oh, we're just not getting enough done. We're not being effective. I know we just need to hire more people. If I could just throw more human beings at the problem, we would get more done. Here's the reality. Throwing more people at the problem usually creates more issues uh, than it solves for the simple reason that good people don't fix broken systems. Broken systems break good people. So if what you're finding is that the business is operating inefficiently, if what you find is that you know we're missing deadlines and we're really just struggling to get uh, things done or we're struggling to get the right things done, one of the worst things you could do is throw more people and more complexity at it. In fact, what we wanna do is, is pull back. So yes, we definitely wanna evaluate your leadership team. So as a CEO, evaluate that leadership team. Make sure that you have strong lieutenants at those key functional areas. Does your head of marketing, that person reporting to you and the head of marketing, head of sales, head of product, head of operations, are they strong in those areas? If not, then you may need to make a change there. But don't think that just increasing head count uh, is gonna magically equal more output because oftentimes the opposite is true. More head count equals less output. Finally, don't try to just grow your way out of lackluster performance. While sales can solve a lot of problems, if sales have already stalled, and if you've tried everything that you can think of, you've kind of pulled everything out of your bag of tricks, then more random acts of marketing is rarely the answer. So. Instead of just flailing around in search of the latest and greatest tactic that will solve all of your growth woes, recognize that you likely have a capacity issue, okay? it's The answer is probably not some secret whiz-bang sales and marketing tactic that you just haven't heard of yet. I know that's what we wanna believe to be true because it seems like a simple solution that maybe we can control. It just is essentially never the case, okay? It's never that simple. Usually we've run up against just the limits of our current system. We've run up against the limits of our current business model, which really brings me to the real solution for lackluster CEO performance. Nine times out of 10, when a CEO is underperforming, it's usually because they're trying to run the business on an outdated operating system. I mean, just like when a computer's operating system shuts down because it's too old and too outdated to run the latest and greatest tools and tech, businesses can outgrow their old systems, processes, and even business model. Now, the subject of building and upgrading a company operating system definitely deserves a video all its own. And fortunately, that is exactly what I've done. I will drop a link in the description to that video. But for now, here's what I want you to know. All right, I want you to know that if you're struggling at the CEO role, or if you have a CEO at your company who's struggling, but you know they're working hard, you know that they're skilled, right? It's not because you're a failure, all right? It's likely because you've been successful. And I'm not just blowing smoke here, all right? Your business 
has simply outgrown your current operating system. And that's a good thing. That's what was supposed to happen. So in a very real sense, you probably have become a victim of your own success. Your business has grown, which means it's outgrown your old operating system. That was kind of the plan all along, but nobody told you that you needed to make those upgrades along the way. So again, if you have the CEO title, but you're kind of feeling like a fraud right now, just know that you're not broken, your business isn't broken, and know that you're not alone. What you're going through is something that all CEOs go through. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, if so, drop a comment below. We'd love to hear about it. And uh, if we can help you with the uh, operating system upgrades, that is what we do at The Scalable Company. Again, check out that next video and I'll see you over there.